Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new series here today on the channel. We're going to be playing some Crusader Kings 3 as William of Normandy, William the Conqueror. We're going to be playing as England. So, welcome to the first episode. I've got to say a huge thank you to Paradox Interactive for sending me a free early access code of CK3 and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them and their community team. I'll put in the description below the Steam page for Crusader Kings 3. It will be available on the 1st of September, the 2nd, if you are an Australian. Just go check it out. I want you to get the time conversion right. So, starting up on the main menu, this is William of Normandy. His wife and his firstborn son. I quite like the 3D modelling um, that you get to see. So, let's start a new campaign. So... Let's go through all the start dates before we get stuck into the fate of England in 1066, which is what we're going to be playing. So, first up, we've got the Wrath of the Northmen in 867. Uh, the Wrath of the Northmen, two years ago, King Ayla of Northumbria threw the great Viking hero, hero Ragnar Luthbrook into a pit of snakes to die. And then his sons went on and set sail. So, here are some of the starting cool and unique characters that you can play as. You can also play as any ruler in uh, 867 as well. So, we've got Ivar. The Boneless, Bjorn Ironside, uh, Hulfdan, Hulfdan Whiteshirt, um, Alfred and Sigurd Snake in the Eyes. You can play as Ragnar's sons. Uh, going to the next start date here. It's still all in 867, but this just shows you some of the cool and unique uh, characters that you can play as. We've got Rurik Ruked of the Rus. So maybe we could do a Russian campaign in the future. Let me know comments as well, feedback and suggestion for the series. And if you want to see more CK3 on the channel, leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new and here with notifications on. I plan to have CK3 take over the channel for the next couple of days and weeks. So uh, moving further now here as well, in France, we've got the Carolingian breakup with Charles, Lothar, uh, Ludwig and King Louis as well. So, we're going to be playing on the fate of England. We're going to be playing as William of Normandy. Uh, we could have played as King Sven, uh, King Harold Goodwinson, uh, King Malcolm of Scotland, and then Harold Hadrada of Norway there. Uh, Rags to Riches, uh, the Petty King in Ireland. Uh, no one really of note that I really know too much there. Iberia in pieces, of course, as well. You can play as King Alfonso, Sancho, Garcia, and sort of form the Kingdom of Castile and Leon. So we're going to be playing as England. Well, I might have sort of misspoke. It's a Freudian slip, I guess. We're going to be playing as Normandy, and hopefully we can conquer England. So... The 15th of September, 1066, the fate of England. When the childless King Edward the Confessor died, it plunged England into a succession crisis, unlike any that had come before. The three men attempt to secure the throne for themselves. Harold Goodwinson, William the Conqueror, Harold Hadrada, and <laughs> while Sven, Sven and Malcolm stood by, ready to pounce, at any sign of weakness. So, we want to sail over from Normandy. We are currently... Our liege lord for now is the Kingdom of France. So, we want to try and push over and take England. And then we want to sort of form the United Kingdom. Then maybe we could push back and take France. But let me know in the comments where you'd like me to expand and conquer. So, William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy. Um, so, culture normal. Normal. Norman, I mean. Faith, Catholicism, difficulty medium. Uh, Normandy... So, the House of Normandy trace, is, uh, trace their lineage back to the Norse Vikings and established themselves in the mainland of Europe over 200 years ago. Now, William II dreams of leading his family's rule to England and he believes his status as successor to the throne was promised by the late King Edward, even recognised by Harold Goodwinson himself. However, now this Edward is gone, Harold has broken his oath and has taken the crown for himself. William is at war with England. Can you muster forces and claim what is rightfully yours? We have Robert Courthouse, my son, and William the Red, my second-born son. Okay, guys, welcome to the campaign map. Let's get stuck into the series. So, we currently start off in Normandy, of course. Uh, we've only got 4.9k soldiers at our disposal. But before we sort of dive into the mechanics, let's have a look at the 
map for CK3 it looks fantastic in my opinion if I do say so myself so you've got this sort of outer map um, like on the board here and then you can zoom all the way in and it can go down into like the various castles and hold things as well the map extends all the way down into uh, Africa oh, I guess this is the Ivory Coast the Cote d'Ivoire uh, pushing over way into India as well there's even some Chinese factions over here which is quite cool maybe doing a, a sort of a, a non Eurocentric faction might be quite cool maybe playing as one of those tribes down here the Byzantine Empire are quite strong at this time period the Turks as well the HRE has been formed, or HRE rather, France, and yes, I guess Iberia is very much divided still. So, let's have a look at William. So, he is a ambitious character, he's one of his, he's got the ambitious trait. Uh, he's diligent, he's brave, he's a brilliant strategist, and he is legitimized. So, 20 Marshal Command... 12 stewardship, 13 intrigue. So he's a fantastic commander. Let's have a look at the dynasty tree for Normandy because they were founded by Vikings, if you guys can remember. Is this... Yeah, Horof. I guess <laughs> this is Rollo, I guess. <laughs> look at Rollo, 85 years of age. Obviously, I'm assuming this... Yeah, the brother of Ragnar Luthbruck, or supposedly. Yeah. Uh, so here is our family tree, 35 members, 19 living. So William has uh, six children, uh, two sons, then William, a daughter, Cecilia, uh, Constance, a, d a daughter, and a second son as well. He has a sister, and yeah, so Marshall. Oh, he's of Normandy as well. Robert of Normandy, Count William as well. So this is our family tree to start off off with. Cool beans, cool, 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 cool beans. Okay, so we're going to choose a martial. Uh, we're going to choose a lifestyle ambition. We're going to go down the martial route because he's twenty. We you're better off min maxing to your particular character. Intrigue's quite cool if you want to sit back, relax, and sort of conquer without military force. But we're already plunged into a war in this time period. We have to really fight, so we might as well continue to go down the martial route. So we've got the strategic focus, authority focus, or chivalry focus. Um, now, normally I don't recommend allowing your faction leaders to lead from the front. However, William is a f really superior commander. He's twenty. Marshall and he's got a strong long family line so even if we do lose William it's not going to be too much of a, a detriment to the Normandy cause so I may be tempted to just get another plus 30 Marshall experience and plus three here Marshall prowess advantage we'll go with strategist focus um, we've already invested a fair bit in this so there's no point of respecing it I guess but here are the other um, trees if you're curious to look okay Let's continue to work down this. So increase opinion. Your liege lord, Philippe of France. He's 14. Yeah. Who's his primary heir? And then after him. Mm, of the Kappa dynasty. Maybe we're better off having a scheme against him. We'll just have to see. So we can start a war against Brittany. Uh, no, thank you. We already are at war with Normandy, the Norman conquest of England. We have 4.9k against their uh, 5.4. We have 600k in the bank for our war, which is good. So some of our children lack guardians. Oh, damn it. I actually right-clicked there. That's all right. So we'll send these proposals out. Just to look after my children. We'll, we won't allow all my children just to go to the one character just in case they get kidnapped. Okay, um, an alliance with the Count of Bayon. I think I'd say so. That's like further down here. Yeah, sure, we'll negotiate with that. Uh, Otto can marry. So who is Otto? Um, my half brother. Uh, okay, so we'll try and get him married off as quickly as possible then. Um, Gwynedd. I want to be conquering Welsh. Potential alliance with the Republic of Venice. Uh, I might just have a quick look here if there's anyone of a better sort. Okay, so I'm trying to get my half-brother married off. I also want to try to secure some alliances for my children. But it looks like the Kingdom of France isn't very secure. They've got a 14-year-old kid, so may uh, king. So maybe... Uh, they've got a sibling, Prince Emma of France. Huh. Okay, I might be better off to betroth into that, actually. 
So what I'll do is I'll arrange a marriage... Is that going to work? No, it's only minus 83. Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, in the HRE, they're quite young as well. Emperor Henrich is only 16, so we can't particularly marry into that line. Okay, so I just went around Europe just trying to see if I can offer off any of my children, maybe get some alliances and stuff. So it looks like France is no-go. Same with the HRE. Hungary and the Byzantine Empire do have a couple of interesting propositions. Same with Castile, Leon, and um, Galatia as well. Oh, actually, I found someone else. Because you want to sort of set out your children so you can secure all the alliances in Europe before they sort of go and get married off. So, um, I can marry my firstborn son and heir to a Byzantine princess. So that's to really secure that alliance. So the firstborn son's married off. She actually doesn't look over... Uh, maybe she does look a bit bad. Oh. Now I'm just being pedantic. Right. Okay. The point I was trying to make is I wanted... Uh, I have to be a little bit fussy with my main heir because we're going to get bad traits at the end of the day. So looking at the Byzantines, the second daughter actually looks a lot better with martial stewardship. She's bossy. So... Even though she's 8, he's only 12, so we can marry the heir apparent to the Byzantine. So that will secure that alliance. Um, so we don't want to do any of this stuff. So we'll send that off. Hopefully that goes through. Then the first one, we can probably marry her to my already accepted relation. So maybe my brother-in-law, maybe. Or half-brother, technically. Okay, so we're going to get ourselves involved into this um, <laughs> essentially Spanish Civil War, which is probably more than likely going to happen. So it's obviously between Garcia, Alfonso, and Sancho, and then there's a sibling involved in this. So Elvira Fernandez of Lyon, I'm going to marry her to William the Red, uh, who is my second, uh, he's technically my third born son, my second born son, for some reason I couldn't find him in there, but the third born son is fine, so that is hopefully going to be accepted as well, and we'll arrange a betrothal between my daughter Cecilia and the heir to the Hungarian dynasty, although the main king is there, so we might need to knock him off eventually. But uh, we'll send her away, that's fine. So we'll secure an alliance with the Hungarians. Okay, so we sent all those marriage alliances off. We're going to have to wait a little bit before we hear confirmation on some of those. We've still got Richard we need to marry off, and eventually Constance and Agatha as well. Okay, so uh, we can declare a petty war there. No, we don't want to do that. You can change the court contract. No, we don't want to do that just yet either. And Order can get married off. Hmm. I really couldn't find anyone that I really liked overly too much for my half-brother. Maybe we'll just have to wait till those factions, because you only can uh, negotiate with a faction once at a time, so I'll leave that there and mind that. So we've got 630 gold, we've got 750 prestige, 150 piety, uh, 185 renowned, and our soldiers. Okay, let's have a look at our realm. Um, so we can probably increase our crown authority. That only costs 200, so we'll pass that law. Uh, Domains-wise as well, it's nothing too crazy. My liege lord is Philip. That should chill, still change. So, confederation partition, maybe... Hmm, yeah, maybe going with single layer primogenitor eventually is probably the play in that department. Military-wise as well, we have 5k in the bank. We are slightly outnumbered with the Godwin forces on the mainland. We could look to invest some more regiments, but it is going to be quite costly. I think we'll just raise all our armies and see how many we can get just on top of that, because we are still at war. So Duchess Matilda, so she is actually Dutch, my wife, which is interesting, so she's going to assist us in rule. Uh, what can we get her to actually go out and do? So we can assist ruler, diplomacy, stewardship, uh, diplomacy, Marshal, well, Stewardship. I guess we'll go back to this just to see how everyone's sort of sitting. So the Bishop, uh, let's go with Religious Relations, I think. We don't want to fabricate any claims just yet because it does cost around about 200 gold. Um, we need to focus on England first. Then we might look at France or something. So uh, 12 for him. We can't even rotate the Bishop out, so that's fine. Okay, let's have a look at this diplomacy. So Count Robert is there for now. We're going to be sorting by ascending first. And Robert, my courtier, 14. So that's a 5 improvement. I'm going to swap that out. And we'll continue with... Um, yeah, let's go with domestic affairs. Okay, so 
my Stuart as well. Let's sort by ascending. 20. Whoa, yeah. So that's a 13% buff. I'd rather take the negative hit. So we'll bring that in and we shall collect taxes in Normandy. So Count Richard is currently my marshal. Organize the levies. Do we have anyone better for the position? 17. So it's not worth angering him. He's quite a sort of grizzled war dog. He's only 80, so he's probably not going to last too long in that particular role anyway. So we'll leave that there for now. Spymaster as well is 15. That's actually not too bad. I'm quite happy with 14. And we disrupt schemes, support schemes. Um, finding secrets is probably... Probably not going to be any secrets just yet because we've just started the game. Disrupting pl plots. Um, if we don't take England quick enough, there could potentially be plots against me. I think supporting my schemes because we probably want to try and sway the bishop further to my side. So we'll go and send that off nicely. Intrigue-wise as well. So that's going on there. Factions. Uh, we need to keep an eye out for. So let's have a look at the major decisions for uh, the Kingdom of Normandy. So found a holy order, consecrated bloodline, found a new kingdom, uh, invite knights and claimants. Maybe inviting some knights might be a good idea. And claimants, as we're fighting a new land, we can invite claimants to help out. We'll invite knights and spend the 150 there as well. Sweet. Okay, well, let's speed things up slightly. We'll wait to rally up in Normandy. Now, we can get some more additional re reinforcements. Um, I am tempted to get some light foot as a regiment. And we also can get Onigas and Mangonels. I'm going to go with Onigas because that's going to allow us to take London quite quickly. Uh, capital sniping still works quite effectively in this game. So we're going to be going for that. Um, uh, you can designate a Guardian. Hey, so that alliance with Leon is now complete. And with Hungary as well. Marvelous news. And with Robert and Theodora as well. Fantastic. Okay, so let's merge up there. We'll give Robert the command, of course. Awesome. And now we'll marry... Uh, Aldo to... Yeah, the eldest Byzantine daughter. We'll get that done and dusted. Now we can call the Hungarian king if we want to. <laughs> I don't particularly think I should. We can change the contract now. It's fine. Okay. Right, well, let's sail over then. I think going for London as quickly as possible is definitely the play. Sniping that out, the better. Now, in CK3... Uh, oh, yeah, so that's gone through now. That marriage. It does cost money to move your armies over the sea. It's kind of great that you don't have to embark, disembark, because that was always a little bit clunky, in my opinion. But now you can sail over. Um, I, ca I, I think you can get ships and make it cheaper for yourself. But William... Of Normandy has sailed over to England and is now besieging London. Oh, here we go. We've got some engaging forces here. It's King Harold Goodwinson himself with 6.2k. Um, so we can call allies over. That's going to cost 350. I don't want to do that. Oh, only 75 for the Byzantines to come over. Let's do that. Could you imagine, like, the Byzantines sailing over with a huge f fleet, like, dominating the English Channel? Um, I wonder how many military forces they have, but they might come over and help us. I don't think we're going to need them, though. But it's sort of make or break after this first fight, I guess. So we're being attacked here, the Battle of London. Uh, greetings, William. Um, the Byzantines are coming. So... It looks like a hey, victory. We have victory here today. William of Normandy has won his first battle in England. Hopefully the first of many more to come. We only lost 600. We killed 1k of theirs. Let's take this city. Alright. Three months left before London is under our control. And hopefully we can kidnap the royal family. They're coming in for round two. And we seem to be winning. Our knight killed Duke. Uh, and your reputation of unhandedness. Okay, so that's still fine. Alright. So we've won another fantastic battle. Hopefully, in 30 days, we'll be able to take London. Enemy combatant captives. Siege one, so 38% now. 
no, they won't accept the demands just yet. But we've rocketed up to 38%. We might be able to get some more reinforcements back in Normandy because we're probably going to need them. Um, we can maybe increase this slightly. We'll do that as well. Okay, so um, I guess we'll just move to this castle here as well. You'd think Wessex is probably, or Winchester is a major... Oh, hang on. If we can go back to the castle, if they want to try and push us again. Because it seems to be a really good defensive position, being in their capital. So let's move over here. It's We don't. We also don't have line of sight that well either. We just need to be mindful of that. Oh, move back. Oh, we've been intercepted. By Harald. But we should be able to win it. Um... I want to try and get this out of the way because I can't read it. <laughs> Some of your counselors believe the job is theirs by the right of blood or influence alone. How wrong they are. After a long day, I am complaining to Matilda when she interrupts me. Okay, so... This is my wife. So I've got a couple of options. I can get better opinion or I can get another child. I think that's what the play is. Um... Yeah, we'll just lay with her, I guess. I'm in the middle of a battle, woman. Right, let's move to Sussex. And we'll stay there for now. So if we can win this fight, it's going to be a close one. We've won. Oh, and we've captured King Harold Goodwinson. Oh, and that's it. That's the war. We've managed to go and capture him. So we shall enforce the demands. You become independent. You gain the Kingdom of England and all the surrounding territories. Now, um, normally in like Europa, um, CK2, you can actually get asked for gold. I think this is automatically done in this. So we're going to enforce demands. And we shall take England. Ah, you are now a mighty king to the loathsome King William. May you ever... Uh, may wisdom ever elude you. You are much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put us to an end, a bloodshed I'll comply with your demands. So be it. And now we have England <laughs> along with our territory here in Normandy. So now we are a free and independent kingdom. I don't even think, yeah, France isn't even my liege lord anymore. Enemy combatants, siege one. Uh, a faction's created against me. That's okay. Siege one. And, right, so who's in the dungeon? That's what I want to know. Yeah, what happened to Haraldson? Oh, so we've only got one guy in court. Okay, so we've got an empty councillor position, because I guess we lost our spy master in the mix of that. We'll sort by ascending as well. Mayor Baldwin of um, Southwark. So we'll bring him in. Okay, so my domain size is quite a lot. 22 out of 5. So we're going to have to put that through our vassals. Um, and let's have a look at our issues now. So the Archbishop doesn't endorse me. So we're still trying to sway Roger himself. Uh, low controlling counties. You will lose land when vassal dies. Okay. Few knights. You can call your ally. Um, are we even still at war? Oh, because now... Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So now, with the invasion of England complete, with the House of Goods, uh, Goodwinson destroyed, we have to deal with the Norwegians that have somehow brought in Chernivgolf. <laughs> okay. So, oh yes, because they have these little island territory up here, the Isles as well, with Petty King... Gudrid Haraldsson. Now, if we go all the way back to this, I'm assuming this is Ivar the Boneless's family tree. Yeah, look, so we've got King Ivar the Boneless, uh, Ragnar Luthbruk, I think. Yeah, and then it goes all the way back. Strong as a boar. So that's quite cool, because then you see uh, Bjorn Einside, uh, Uba, Halfdan, uh, and Sigurd, Snake in the Eye. So we are going, we're actually fighting... So, it sees like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, his six times great-grandfather was Ivor the Boneless up here, which is cool. So, I guess we're fighting them. Okay, so, titles can be requited, uh, uh, created. The Duchy of Cornwall, Wessex, and the, we're holding too many duchies here in East Anglia. 
Okay, so money-wise, we're not doing too bad. Um, I can raise a lot of military forces because now that we have basically all of England in the north under, me, under my control, we're going to have to be careful with that. So I might just reduce that size just quickly. And why are we minus 16? Hmm. It's going to be difficult because I don't know if we can snipe... Scandinavia itself, because like, is it like nearly nigh impossible to go over there? Hmm. Because the Norwegians don't actually have too much there. Oh, they've to. Ah, oh, okay. I can see now. They've already landed in Durham. Okay. So we'll raise my army. We might need to. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I don't want to raise all of them because we're probably going to go bankrupt. I don't think we're going to be able to afford all of them if I raise them. Like, how many do we actually get? That's what I want to know. So. It should be quite a fair few. Yeah, look at this. 15 gold a month. So, we'll... So, I might... Yeah, I might have to disband some of this. Just to save our cash a bit. Because there's 7k in this. 3k and we're losing 15k per turn. It's going to be gathering in two months. And we're already losing the northern part of my kingdom. So, we'll get them to cross to Sussex at least. And then we'll work out how many we have. Uh, Queen Math uh, Mathilde is pregnant. Yeah, it's still costing 16k. It's just that they've got a, such a strong army in the north as well. So we might actually need this 10k. We're just going to have to see once they cross. Okay, they've now landed. So there's a 4.5k and a 37 do we take the 20k hit? Sorry, 20k. The hmm. Like, how long is it going to take us to get up here? Two months. And then if we have to chase them further. I guess we'll rally up. In London. And we'll march north. It's going to take quite a long time to get up there. And we're probably not going to get intercepted. So, King William. I think he's called the Conqueror now. Yeah, King William the Conqueror. Let's move north. So we're only losing 16 now. So we need to make sure these Vikings are thrown back from whence they came. Um, I probably could maybe bring in the Byzantines again. So they've got 8k. We've got 11. Uh, mercenaries available. That's fine. I understand. We don't have the money for it anyway. I'll sort this domain size out in a bit. Um, the only ally that I can seem to call is the Hungarians. And... Yeah. Just how much does it cost? Let's just call them in. Sure. Why not? So we've lost a couple of sieges up here in the north. That's fine. Uh, greetings, William. I'm, I'm sure I'll join. Sweet. So we've got a first fight here. The Battle of Lancaster. If we can make quick work of these Norwegian armies, we'll be laughing. So we've managed to kill 2k. We only lost a k of our own. And we'll push up and try and retake our castles. I've got to keep an eye on my Normandy territory as well. The last thing we need is um, to lose territory there. Your forces took uh, uh, King Harold's son and heir, Prince Olaf, hostage after capturing him. So that's now rocketed up to seven. That's fantastic. A crucial hostage. Um, my daughter, with tired yet blissful smile, my wife presents me with a beautiful daughter. Ah! Oh! So, you will become, uh, you will become my child. What shall I call you? So, in CK3, there's a really cool way how you can choose how your, um, your children are named. We haven't actually had this option because we haven't had any children just yet. I, want, I haven't been able to show this off. So, um, we can call her her randomly generated name of Adele. Um, we can name her after her mother. We can name it after my mother, if you can't remember off the top of your head. We can name it after her mother. And maybe an ancestor, you can randomly generate that as well. A good Catholic name, a Norman name as well. So let's go with a Norman name that I can pronounce and that I like. Um, Eleanor. Sure, we'll go with Eleanor. Eleanor of the Normandy. So she's now born as well, that's fantastic. Okay, so... Um, three months left. So, hmm, I kind of want to give chase to this, but I also know that I can split up my military forces quicker. We'll station enough to siege this, and we'll give chase. 
Yeah, because we want to try and get this wrapped up as quickly as possible. So, let's move you here then. It looks like they're getting hit by someone else, which is hilarious. We'll push in and help. There seems to be Mercians helping out. Fine by me. I guess fighting Vikings is in their blood. <laughs> okay, so securing these territories is the play. So if you can move south, we are on quite fast speed, so I might just turn that down a bit. I only had it on that just so I could move up here. So basically what you can do, you can station defenders to take um, fortresses. Now, what I need to worry about is the invading Vikings coming in like this. So, keeping a decent military presence on the coast is probably not a bad idea. Okay, so that's fine. So, money-wise as well, hmm, we're still hemorrhaging a lot. But we, we have engaged them a lot in, in combat, which is good. So, that siege is now one in Durham. And we probably can rally up with these guys and continue to take these tiles. I'm curious to see what this will rocket up to once we've taken all of this Viking territory back under my control. Because we've nearly finished this siege here. So it's 40% here now. And... I guess they're raiding this? Why have they taken that? That's so weird. Oh! The, well, what, what do you look? What do you see? What do you do? 3.2k Hungarians have set sail somehow. <laughs> From all the way in Central Europe there. They've gone through the Baltic. Now they're in the Northeast Sea. Welcome, my comrades. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, well, I guess... Yeah, so it's still 12k now. We probably can reduce this. What's it at now? They've only got 3.6k soldiers, so we probably can get rid of this. Uh, we're in a friendly area. Alright, that can be gone. Oh, because that still hasn't been taken. Uh, split the army. So what is that? Um, if we split the 3.3k, will that give us enough money? It's only 2k a month. And then that gives us four. Yeah, that gives us plenty. So we'll just need to shrink our military forces because I can't afford to go bankrupt in this. Um, from what I couldn't find, there wasn't a way for me to... Um, this needs to be merged. To... Essentially, like in Europa, you go into debt automatically and then you can pay it back or you can pay it yourself. But what I haven't found is a way to sort of artificially inflate your economy a little bit and get... Um, debt. I couldn't seem to find it anywhere. If anyone sort of sees it, let me know. Okay, so we should be able to take Dorham. That siege has now been won. And... Yeah, so there's now 3.2k coming. So we're essentially sitting still on the same amount of military forces. But without taking it. Um, oh, so this can now be properly betrothed. So that will go through. Yeah, so... They do have Norwegian territory. I'm just trying to think if this adds up if we start taking island territory down in and around here. Another perk available. Yeah, so it'd be unlock strategist, wouldn't it? That would be the trait we'd probably go for. Well, let's try and siege some of these castles out. Okay, so there seems to be 3k heading south. I guess we'll move down to intercept. There seems to be more. So let's move to Durham. Because the... Hungarians are now here. I've got to play this one safe. There's no one attacking me. Yeah, what happened to the Byzantines? Why can't they come in? That's what I want to know. We can ransom some of these prisoners as well, but I don't want that to be reduced. Ugh, it's just a little bit tedious because you get thrown into so many wars early on. Well, I guess, so what is this? A forest and a hill. If we can somehow get the high ground on top of that, that might be the play. Yeah, it looks like they're running with, with their tails between their legs. Be right. My steward has informed me of an obscure law, okay, that states that by the king, maybe it's protector. Um, normally such an archaic lord would be dismissed, but it offers me a unique chance to put Count Richard, my vassal, and the current ruler. So, he likes me, he doesn't like 
that. So the law is clear. Richard can keep the title, my grace. Count Richard already doesn't like me. <laughs> Minus 100. So it doesn't overly matter too much if it's just going to get down to 70. The law is clear. Anyway, we're engaging them here in battle, in the Battle of Furness, which is a forest fight. We might be able to have some Hungarians fighting with us. No! Maybe not. So that's now one. That's at 52%. And now they're going back into the sea from whence they came. Now... Enforce demands. Would you accept a white piece? Hmm. How far are we away from this? Because I'm actually probably nearly to, to, tempted to do this. Because he's going to be... Like, we're not going to ever be able to conquer his stuff for quite some time anyway. I don't want to sort of focus... Yeah, like taking this might be a little bit weird. I'm nearly happy to maybe do this. So, so a white piece. We spend 150... Allies share 300 based on this stuff. Yeah, so... I think I might sue for a white piece. Because I want to consolidate. I want to build up. And sort of just secure England before I have to deal with this. So, a white piece. Let's do this. So, hopefully that gets accepted. Greetings, King William. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your offer of peace. Let us put this conflict behind us. So now my son Robert has come of age. So be it. And now we're in a time of peace. This is my last chance to press my claim on the Duchy of Barcelona. Um, may, yeah, may your journey be swift and safe. We don't want to do that. So let's disband the army for now because we're not at any wars. And we didn't really lose any crazy territory either. Okay, so let's try and work through some of this. We've got the domain limit, which is going to take quite a lot. Okay, so low county, uh, wars you can declare, Brittany and Scotland. We don't want to do just that just yet. We can change the contract. We could make it high, but it makes it minus 15, so we don't particularly want to do that. Can in prison, some criminals. Um, no, I don't want to do that overly too much. Titles can be created. Cornwall, Wessex is going to cost way too much. Too many duchies held, that's fine. Prisoners can be ransomed. Count Sven for 50, I'm going to do that. Um, he is a Norwegian Catholic, so peace be with you. <laughs> and also a clan chieftain there for 50 as well. He's a Orthodox Rus. Oh yes, because we were technically fighting Russians, weren't we? And Agatha can have a Guardian, so we'll go and send that off. Uh, I want to quickly show you this, actually. So where is it? Uh, ah, here we go. Decisions. So, founded university, founded empire, embraced the English culture. We definitely could go down that route. Um, reclaim... Uh, yeah, request claim on Ireland. So, we can claim Ireland if we want... Found a holy order. So there's a lot of cool stuff here as well that we can go down. Maybe founding an empire might be the play. So these are the decisions we can go down as well. We probably still need a court physician as well. It's probably not a bad idea um, spending that once we get a little bit of cash. But I'm going to consolidate. So I'm going to build up. And then we'll look to push and fight somewhere else. The Byzantines seem quite strong. Uh, they've been split up there in Hungary. No one's really expanding too much in here, there. In Scandinavia, maybe slightly. Um... Yeah, so overall in the world, nothing really too much has changed too much. But I can't wait to see how the legacy of William the Conqueror ends up. If it's anything like real life, hopefully it's a long-lasting dynasty. Okay, well, let's continue on then. Let's look for another fight, another scrap, let's say. Let's go to war once more. I want to do an hour-long part here today, so we'll keep on going. I want to do sort of daily hour-long content for this series. So let's see who who we can sort of target. So I think Scotland's probably the best bet for now. So we'll try and fabricate a claim on the uh, Kingdom of Alba. So it seems like their main seat is in uh, St. Johnston there. And it's bang smack in the middle of the kingdom in Fife there. So we should be able to take that and get that under our control. We can war deck them straight up. And bring in the Hungarians. So, seize... Ah, the Eldon of Cumberland there. So we could war deck them straight up here now. 
but then we'd have to super piece for them later. There seems to be four titles in and around Scotland itself. Uh, mental break, uh, wit and desires. Lately, I feel more consistently distracted by lovish thoughts and erotic fantasies. Oh, okay. With all the hardships of my everyday life, it's all too easy to lose myself in daydreams. Um, convert to currism. No, that's a religion. We don't want to do that. I think the athlete trait's quite good. It relieves stress. Um, if you're stressed, mental break. Yeah, so let's get the athletic trait. That might even help us in combat as well. We'll like long walks on the beach. And horse riding and stuff, I guess. Uh, yes, so that alliance has come through. And that's been ransomed off. And, ah, oh, the Duke of Austria has come through there. The comet sighted. The appearance of the comet in the heavens causes all mortals to pause. What could uh, this strange aberration mean? Um, stress, critical. Okay, we don't want that because that can compound. It's not too... It's kind of... It's just not... Yeah. It's because of our traits we get unique events there. Look, it's not too hard to deal with stress. Um, especially in CK2. Um, I'm not so sure in CK3, but we should be alright. Just something we need to keep an eye on. And my daughter Cecilia has come of age, and she's engaged to Prince David of Hungary. My vassal called Robert has arrived outside the castle, um, in a grand procession. Okay, so we might be able to get a little bit of coin off him. 75, lose 30 opinion. Um, that's probably even the best... One there. 75. We could get slightly more. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go with that one. We'll go with the top one. Hey! The claim's done. Greetings, King William of England. I have prowled through the documents. So, we can have... Yeah, so I can just get Gowrie. No. Yes, all of Albany will be mine. So it does cost a little bit on claims, so you do need to save up for them. A schema court. My spy master has come to me with grave news. Someone is plotting to kill the Archbishop. <laughs> Sounds like a Johnny Depp movie. The Archbishop isn't the Archbishop. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes from that is, Everyone look busy. Jesus is coming. Uh, so, going to war with Malcolm of Scotland of, um, yeah, Dunkland's okay. Well, let's go to war with Scotland. Okay, and we've got a minor faction coming up against me. Faction to install Robert of Normandy. What's this for? Um, they want Robert on the throne. He is of Norman blood. Yeah, we might have to in the future create a cadet branch or something. Um, so the Duke of Mercia, Edwin, Anglo-Saxon, was its own independent kingdom at some point, so they're probably going to be, yeah, you'd think they'd be the major regional power there, so, hmm, maybe we're just trying to sway Duke Robert is the play, and then keep an eye on that Mercian Duke, I guess, yeah, so we'll try to get rid of the Duke, and sway Robert. Okay, so Malcolm of Scotland, of Clanmore, so we can take all of this in Scotland. It looks like it's going to bring in the Welsh, that's fine, but we'll be able to bring in the Hungarians. Army-wise, let's increase the light footmen there slightly. I would eventually, once our economy gets good, to get heavy um, Norman cavalry. I think that'd be quite fitting, but it's going to take quite some time before we can even conquer and claim the entirety of the United Kingdom. But let's start off now with a war against Scotland. Uh, let's declare war. Freedom for Scotland! Let's take it. So, uh, anything else we can do here for now? So we can call in Austria, but that costs 150. Hungary, yeah, so we have 600 in the bank. Yeah, it's going to cost a little bit too much, so let's just spend the 150s there on Austria and Hungary. So we can't bring in the Hungarian king, however, we can bring in um, Prince David, which I think is... I think it's the nephew of the king, I don't think he's directly related. Um, yes, yeah, so because he's the Duke of Transylvania, and we'll bring in Austria as well. 
So we've managed to muster 3.6k here with King William, King William of Normandy, and they have 1.3k, we have 2.7. So let's cross, up, cross over. We'll spend the 30 gold. We need to keep an eye on that because it's still minus one. We want to try and continue to go with capital sniping. Um, seeing as we're already in transit, it might actually be quicker to go up there. It's the Welsh that are going to be the more annoying. I don't know if it changes overly too much. But let's just qu cross the channel. And... Yeah, so everyone's raised. So we've only got 3.7k. That should be enough. So let's push north then and deal with the Scottish. So Wales is still split up. Same with Ireland. And Ivor the Boneless' children are there. Oh, a new opponent. Nothing in this world is certain, especially in times of war. The English came... Oh! So there's a new king. King Mackle. Um, yeah, we'll continue the war. Right, okay. Yeah, because... Uh, actually, we'll go with effective knights there. We're saying with Marshall. Because the thing is with Scotland, they have to have this, the seat and the seal. They're all... They're voted by clan chiefs, aren't they? It's not... Yeah. It, it's among the Highland tribes that gets voted. Well, back then in this time period. Before swallowed up by England. So, we'll... Yeah, so it's actually moved that. Um, we'll station the besiegers there in Gallery. We could move to Fife, where Edinburgh is. Oh, and they flanked me. Yeah, the AI, it's mostly capital sniping in this, because it's like you want to try and win and engage the armies if you outnumber them uh, militarily the better. You want to try and get rid of their army so you can capture their liege lord if he's fighting in particular. But capital sniping is not too bad because sometimes you can capture the royal family or if the king is rather docile. So they've actually flanked me quite well here. They were going down to Normandy, which is my capital. Now they've flanked back. We might try and make a defensive position here in the castle. We need to rally up. We've got 31 command. And there's another 2.3k Transylvanians and 1.4k Austrians coming. No real engagement has come up just yet. And they don't seem to be pushing. Uh, discipline and loyalty. Knowing how the soldiers act around each other. Time for Edwin to get some new recruits. Uh, sure. Let's go with the soldier scheme, I think. Right. So... Yeah, they just seem to be going back out again. We'll merge up again. For now, William's going to be able to tank most of the wars. So we'll station the besiegers there. Because he's ranked 31, which is actually insane. I don't even know if we're ever going to have that high for his descendants. So it looks like Transylvania have come through. Uh, curses, the scheme is happening. Because oh, we've got that murder plot going, I guess. Because we don't want a civil war during this. So we've been engaged here. The 400 is sieging, but it's it's not too bad because although we might lose the first initial skirmish of a couple hundred men, Prince Lazo, Lazo with my... yeah, because he's married to my sister there, has baited them in. So we've got the Battle of Lenethgau, the Hungarians, and myself are there. So en route to murder. Here we go. I don't know if this plot's going to overly walk, uh, work too well. So much notifications here. So, I guess we can give him a detailed map. Pay a hunter to pay a map. Explore the plans yourself. So, oh man, if this murder plot goes off, we might be able to stop that civil war trying to put my cousin on the English throne. But we've won a huge victory here against the Scottish and the Welsh. Okay. Uh, so, it has reduced quite a bit, yeah. And there's not as many claimants there as well. He does have a fair bit of military support, though. And we'll start... Yeah, we'll continue to scheme on him. So if we can get rid of the Mercian Lord, we might be able to bring that further back under control. So only 3%. We've won a really good fight against the Welsh and Scottish Coalition. Strategic Impasse. Baldwin and Prince Robert, my son. Um, I know how we can employ both strategies, yeah. So this is just due to our martial prowess. We can deal with it amicably, I guess. They're coming up again as well, trying to liberate St. Johnston. 
the King Makil. And now the Austrians have arrived as well. Alliances are crucial in CK3. If you can play it right, you can inherit kingdoms. And more importantly, allow them to do most of the fighting and the dying. We are currently losing 26 gold. Disciplined and loyalty. He does look a little bit bruised and beaten up. <laughs> the Duke of Mercia. <laughs> Alright. And... Mm, we probably can decrease that just slightly. Because there's 45% here now. We should be able to wrap up this war. Uh, they're going for my capital again. How have they managed to scrounge up 2.4k? We're going to have to go down and deal with it, probably. Yeah, so let's head down. We can't afford for them to take my capital. I thought oh, we won so many fights there, but they fled, like, straight down south. Um, knights and peasants. With coin in the right pocket, the agitators... <laughs> Always trust a mob to do the wrong thing. So, I incited a mob fight, and they wounded him. Um, mental break, no time for myself. Maybe I'll take a walk, yeah. Okay, so... We should be able to lift the siege. 2.7. We've really just got to go for it, I guess. We can't afford them to take my capital. We still can't enforce a peace. Those reinforcements haven't come down with me. I'm surprised they've managed to rally up 2.4k camp dispute. Um, deliver a speech. Brawl. Might as well join in. Okay. So we are winning in the fight for Normandy. And we've won. Okay. Still can't quite yet enforce the demands. But Count William of Normandy is no more. So the claimant is... Yeah, so it's like Robert's relation there. Robert's brother. Okay. <laughs> and the Duke hates as well. I love how bruised in battle uh, bloody they are. The 3D models in CK3 are so impressive. I really do quite like it. It gives a little bit more depth and flavour to the characters. I like it aloud. Okay, so... 73%. Information brokering. More secrets there. Hmm. I must know the truth. Sometimes, depending if you've got, for example, okay. So, there's a little bit of tomfoolery going around here with the Archbishop, that's fine. Yeah, sometimes if sometimes your children <laughs> are disputed their legitimacy, let's say. Sometimes it's better just to ignore it, depending. It's not necessarily best all the time to out it. But let's try and wrap up this Scottish war here today. Okay. Eighty-one percent here now, and romance and stuff. No, let's go with that. That looked better. We also want to try and get into stuck into as many wars as possible with William, because he's thirty-six command now, which is absolutely insane. I don't know if we're ever going to have anyone um, that strong. He's a generational talent. Let's say secret exposed. Yeah, who would have known? Whatever. Um, the crimes cannot go unpunished. I don't really care. They're really nobodies. These accusations are naught but lies and malice. Yeah. Lose one level of devotion. That's alright. Okay. So the Welsh and Scottish coalition are still hovering in and around France. And they keep on pushing back into enemy territory. It's like sometimes when you just can't chase and run them down. Maybe having some more cavalry will increase movement speed. 
The Battle of Dunkirk. 1067. So we're only eight years into this campaign. Oh, and now we've hit 100 there as well. Let's cede this territory from the Scottish. The English claim on the petty kingdom of Albany. 100 fame. Thanks to the Hungarians and the Austrians, the Duke of Transylvania, have come and helped us out. To the loathsome King William, tales of your misdeeds are told from Ireland to Cathy. <laughs> we have as much greater fall I've you know, imagined. Too much bloodshed. <laughs> Let's disband the army there. So we are hemorrhaging a little bit of cash, which we need to keep an eye on. And we'll decrease this slightly as well. Crikey, that's annoying. The two fantastic victories. We have an empty council position. Who's my best commander apart from me? Uh, Count Robert. Your half-brother. We can assign and bring him in. Earl Malcolm of Clanmore. Oh, right. That's so confusing. So, we declared war upon him because he was elected... Um, King Malcolm of the Dunkill dynasty. He was overthrown because he allowed the war, but because we've seized that territory, he's technically my vassal. <laughs> well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, he's not too bad of a marshal, so we'll allow him to be our marshal because we only fought him very early in the war. It was mostly King Mac, let's say. In the north. So we've managed to bring in um, <laughs> the Earl there. So we've taken two small pieces of territory in Scotland. Which is going... Now that we've we've ceded that, we're going to be able to expand and increase our domain size. Which is fantastic. Okay. So we can ransom some of these prisoners as well. So I'm going to start winding things down, guys. Unfortunately, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. If you've gotten to this part, put in the comments. I don't know. Seems he likes turtles. Just uh, have a little bit of fun with the other subscribers, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for watching this hour-long video. I plan to have CK3 take over the channel in the next coming weeks and months. So stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, another hour-long part of the England of Normandy Let's Play. We're still continuing to, of course, try and conquer and hold the entirety of the United Kingdom. Maybe we can push into Brittany and historically Aquitaine. We've got to watch out for this faction that's growing as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Support the series, and I'll do more CK2 on the channel by leaving the video a like and subscribing. Got to say, of course, a huge thank you to Paradox Interactive for sending me a free early access code of CK3 and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them. I'll put in the description below the Steam page if you guys would like to check out further information. And I do have my own sort of affiliate game links if you want to go purchase the game and flick me a couple of bucks. So I'm going to play the outro now. Much love from Australia. Peace. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.